first let me just talk to you. I, I will read the press release. Okay. Please yes. do, sir. Sure. Um, on Saturday, April 26, 2014, at approximately 8.20 p.m., the Canaan officers responded to a location in New Canaan to investigate a family dispute. Investigating officers gathered information and found probable cause to arrest the below individuals for the listed violation of the Connecticut General Statutes. Arrested were Paul Simon, 72 years of age, charged with 53A 182, disorderly conduct, and Edie Burkell, 47 years of age, charged 53A 182, disorderly conduct. Both Mr. Simon and Ms. Raquel were to appear in Norwalk Superior Court this morning. Chief, can you tell me what happened when you got there? What was this, when the guys got there, what happened? What was the situation? What did you say? Uh, when they were called to the scene of where the dispute was reported, uh, the officers investigated and uh, determined that there was an altercation and that there was probable cause for an arrest. And under Connecticut law, we were obligated to make an arrest. Um, because it was considered domestic violence. What kind of altercation are we talking about, sir? It was a physical altercation, a minor in nature. Okay, what was the state of uh, Mr. Simon and Ms. Ms. Raquel physically? What did they observe? I don't know. Scratches, bumps, bruises? I'm not going to specify what the actual injuries were, other than they were minor. Were a physical altercation, would it be punching or something? No, not punching. It was a minor altercation, sufficient to require an arrest, but not significant enough to be called uh, punching or anything like that. And you said it was a 911 tip? It was a hang-up call. Yeah. What does that mean, a 911 hang-up call? What is that? That's if you call 911 on your on a telephone, and then you just hang up. Um, we still get the information that there was an incident at wherever the location occurred, and we're obligated to go and investigate and determine. And the caller did not. Uh, the caller did not identify themselves. It was a hang-up call. Yeah. So someone picked up that phone, dialed 911, and hung up. Exactly right. What was the emotional state of the two, as observed by your officers, sir? Uh, I don't know what the emotional state was. Um, were they upset? Were they yelling? Or? I don't know. Any indication they've been drinking? Or? Uh, there's, I'm not going to reveal any information about that. Okay. What did they say happened? It was an altercation. It was like a very common uh, domestic incident that occurs all the time. Um, and there was a dispute, some kind of argument, and uh, we were obligated to make an arrest. Is that them talking or your guys talking about that they said that there was a dispute? Did they? Is that what they would discern from the two parties? Yes, yeah, so part of their investigation was they discerned that there was a dispute amongst the two parties. What was the dispute about? I don't know. They have three children, is that correct? I don't know how many children. Were there children in the home at the time, sir? Uh, that's not clear. Is this your first time that you went to the house for a domestic dispute? It, I'm not going to confirm where it occurred, um, although it occurred in Ukraine. I'm not going to specify that it was at their house. Um, would you say it was not at their house? I wouldn't say that either. Well, is this the first? I I'll confirm it occurred in New Canaan. That's it. Well, um, is this the first time that you either arrested them or, or dealt with them about a domestic dispute? It is. You were mentioning earlier when you're talking to some of the other people that uh, you described them. How how would you or how have you described them in this community? Because they're known to you. They are. They are. They're known well to the community. They're very nice people. Um, very willing to help us when we need help. Uh, and frankly well-known enough that everybody knows who they are, they're quiet, they're, they keep to themselves. Great people, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, this incident occurred, but we were obligated to make an arrest because of what occurred. You ever been called to their house for anything like this or anything? Never have. What have you ever had any other interaction with them in a non-confrontational, any in positive interaction? Many times. Chief, yeah. how Did cooperative were they? Them? No. Yes. How cooperative were they when, when officers arrived? Uh, they were cooperative. What does that mean? <laughs> They, they, they add, we ask questions, they answer questions, we determined there was probable cause for an arrest, and we made the arrests um, by summons, which means pretty much they're given a ticket, and they were summoned to appear today in court. In the court. So, so did, they they did they stay in the house after your officers left? Did they stay in the house after your officers left? We're asking left? the same thing. Were they ever taken out of, the, out of wherever it was, or taken wow. here, or was it a summons? They were not taken into custody, they were given a summons. And allowed to return? Yeah, they were, they were allowed to return at some point. What's the technical term for right now? I mean, they're released from custody. They're not in custody. Yeah, they've it's been released. arrested. Been arrested and pending court appearance. Well, is that and Chief, I apologize. I arrived just a little bit late. But did any, did either of the of the suspects here, did they have any marks or anything on them in terms of? There were some minor injuries. I'm not going to elaborate specifically what they were, but there were some minor injuries. Chief, do either of them have prior records of anything? I don't know. Not, yeah. not that I'm aware of. No. What was their not name? It was a promise to appear in court. Is Both of them had a BTA? Yes. Is it a bench warrant? How did you describe it earlier? Is it a ticket? What did you say it was? It's a misdemeanor summons because it's a misdemeanor arrest. 
So it was a summons arrest. In essence, we can arrest someone to take them into custody or we can release them on their recognizance by way of a ticket, which is a summons. So it was a summons arrest. Did the hangout call come from the resident where the, where the incident took place? Where the location, the location where the incident took place, a call came from there, yes. Was it either one of the parties that made the call? I don't know. Is that what I'm assuming you're trying to figure out at this point? Is I would say, yeah. Okay. yeah. Was there, I mean, you, you don't want to really say where it happened, but the location, was, was there any sign, or were there any signs of maybe some kind of disruption or broken property or anything like that? I, I'm not going to go into specifics. I mean, I kind of said pretty much the incident occurred. We believe there was domestic violence. We had probable cause to make an arrest. We made the arrest, and they're appearing in court today. Um, I'd rather not elaborate into specific details. What like happens that. now down the road for these guys? Um, what happens now is, frankly, the police we aren't involved anymore. Um, once we make the arrest, they appear in court today. Um, then it's up to the prosecuting attorney and, and their defense attorney what happens with the case. Uh, traditionally, domestic violence cases, there's lots of diversionary yeah. programs um, that allows uh, domestic violence arrests to be erased or dismissed. Um, once the programs are completed. So that's pretty common for all domestic violence arrests, regardless of who the folks are. Chief, do you have any jail time with this? I, I'd be very surprised if that it could ever happen. Chief, so. in general, whenever you have a domestic dispute, normally it's the aggressor um, who's the one that's arrested. In this particular case, why were both arrested? If, if both are involved in uh, aggression, which we believe we have probable cause to make an arrest for, um, that's this instance. So there was aggressiveness on both sides. Um, which we deem was in self-defense. Did they have to be restrained at all during the no, questioning? No, absolutely not. So the injuries were minor. Did either of them seek medical attention? They did not. Misdemeanors, how would you classify the, the, the charge? Or? It's a misdemeanor, exactly right. Yes. Were they both allowed to stay in the home afterwards, or were they one was told they couldn't come back? Uh, one agreed to leave and go to another location. Yes. Which, one, which one was that? I'm not going to say. One more more information be available about the incidents? Uh, probably won't be for the immediate future. Um, I suspect we've released uh, all that we want to release at this stage and probably wouldn't release anything more. Um, like I said, we're trying to be respectful of the situation. Although these uh, domestic violence had incidents happen a lot in New Canaan, uh, sadly enough, um, in this instance, it involves celebrities and uh, we're trying to be respectful of them and of their families, um, like we are with any domestic violence incident, obviously. If, uh, if a domestic violence arrest occurred with somebody that wasn't a celebrity, you guys I wouldn't care that much about it or it wasn't that important. Um, so we're just trying to be respectful and treat this like we would any other case. Chief, could you go through quickly what you told the other people about an increase in domestic, domestic incidents or how, how did you describe it? Uh, we've seen a substantial increase in family disputes this year, uh, about a 68% increase in New Canaan. And uh, not all of those family disputes are domestic violence. Um, but we're seeing a, a big increase, which concerns us. Um, it's either good or bad, depending on uh, how you look at the situation. It's good if people are calling us and asking for help. Um, it's bad if those incidents are increasing uh, for some unknown reasons, who knows why. Um, but we, we do want people to call us and help and reach out, and we're here to help, and we have a lot of resources we can provide. Were there conditions do you have any of idea release? why that's happening? Or is there any it's, it's unclear. Um, it could be a lot of different reasons. It could be. Um, because the economy, because the stressors that are individual, and it could very well be because we're putting more information out about ways people should contact us and the, the services we provide. So it could be partly that people are, are more confident that when they do call us, we're going to help them, and they're more willing to call than they ever have before. You Were said the 911 call was a hang-up. Can you describe what the call, what was going on in the call? Was there screaming or? It's just a hang-up. So a hang-up pretty much is there's no voice contact. So you call up, and it's hung up on immediately. Uh, and I'm assuming you, that was. Can you clarify that it came from the location of where the incident was? It did. Yes, I'll clarify that. Or the conditions of the room was from the landline, and that's how you knew to go to that particular place. Exactly right. right. Yes. Were there conditions of their of their release? There were con no. There was no specific conditions of release other than we assure we, before we left the scene, we made assurances that both were safe, and that no other instances would occur, meaning that one of the parties agreed to leave and did leave, and uh, that's pretty common in these instances. Was that just an agreement voluntarily, or was that a... Uh, it was. It was a voluntary agreement, and if our officers are at the scene, and they believe that it'll be followed through on, then that's their discretion to do that. Who responded? Uh, you came in officers. How many? Like, how many? Like two? I believe three or four officers 
inevitably we're at the scene. Did your EMS service also respond? They did not. Why are you hesitant to, to say or confirm it's the home? Is it a privacy issue? Or? It is. I'm, you know, you, you can Google it and you can try to find what you like, but I, I don't want to confirm where these folks live. Um, just out of privacy and concerns for them. And generally, we try to avoid that when we do it with domestic violence as well, because frankly, they're both victims and uh, they, have, they have children involved, and we're trying to be very cautious about that. Can you clarify? Your, your, you're saying it's dom domestic violence, but you're also saying it's a dispute. Yes. I, is a dispute under the, viol the violence umbrella? Or? Well, I, I guess it depends on what we're referring to. The 32 incidents we've had this year are called family disputes. Not all of them are family violence. But in this which case. To rest. This was a family dispute, and it was family violence under the Connecticut General Statutes, which required an arrest. And again, you can't say where we were about, right? I, I'd rather not go into detail about what it was about, other than it was a, a dispute. It, it uh, went to the level where we had probable cause, and we were obligated to make an arrest under the General Statutes. And were they processed as a normal arrest on shots, fingerprints, everything? No. Uh, they weren't taken into custody, so mugshots and fingerprints were taken. Um, it's pretty common when we have domestic violence incidents that aren't so severe that we release people at the scene by summons, okay. and that's exactly what we did in this circumstance. They were not taken into custody? They were not. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Can I just get your name on camera now? Sure. Apologies. Sure, it's okay. Leon Crowley.